ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to talk about installing AdGuard on Linux Mint. So essentially when you install Linux Mint, um, it automatically uses the socket port of it. And AdGuard you need the socket port 453. So when you install AdGuard, it's typically pretty easy. <coughs> and I'm going to run you through the steps of how to do it. Now I'm not going to install it in this video, but I will show you of how I installed it. I'm not going to go through great detail. And this is a unedited cut. Now this I have a little old HP Thin Client I bought for fifteen, sixteen bucks. And it's only for using AdGuard only. So when you come to the AdGuard, Linux Mint should have curl. This right here, like I said, this box is slow, so, but it does enough. Right here is how you add it in. And you just, right here is the copy button. And from there, <coughs> you open up terminal. You just copy and paste that in there. Then it's going to ask for a password. You put the password that you have in there that you have for AdGuard. Also, I go down here and change the port number. You can edit your connection. And you click on here, and you click here. From there, you fill in, I think, four things, which is the IP address that you want to use for AdGuard, and the subgroup, I think. Anyways, it was port 24, and... Um, Another another connection and it says on there DNS and I just set the DNS to the ad card. So anytime that I go to this address on port 3000, I get ad card. Now, once you're done installing this, you're gonna come here and you're gonna punch in whatever your ad card is. So let's say you set the port to 15 and it's 3000. You hit enter, you would go to AdGuard. Now, with AdGuard, it's going to say that it can't do it because of uh, binding with port 53. Now, there is a way around it, which essentially it's very easy to get around and I will put these in the description below once this video uploads. <coughs> You're going to have to do some terminal work and edit a few things, but for the most part, it's pretty simple. You just see right here, port 53, in use of the system use, sudo 53. And it tells you what's using that port, UDP, TBC. So it agrees something like this. Which, if if you get the red lettering once you install AdGuard, you, you automatically know that this is what you got to do. So down here, you type in this terminal command back into terminal. Then, in the terminal, you will see at the bottom where it says DNS. I essentially just copied this entire thing and I pasted it in there. 
It says down here, create a link. But you want to save it. So this is right here to save the file using NeoTexter. Hit uh, Cert plus X, then type Y, and then press Enter. Very, very simple. Once you're done with that, then you will go back to AdGuard and you're going to finish setting your AdGuard up. So, you know, uh, the specific IP address you want to use, specific port you want to use, and etc. And once you're up and done, you will see. You will see Edgar. From there, you add you obviously you know get into it, and you set everything up. Now, if you see something on that says yeah, where it is? It says local. Um, then it gives a, a little IP address. It says one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one. Um, that means that it wasn't done right. So you would have to go back through it. And to uninstall AdGuard is quite simple as well. So you see this entire area. Right there, my, where my mouse is, there's a V. So just copy that, and instead of using V, you put a U to uninstall. You put an R to reinstall. So you would have to do it again. That is how simple it is to get around the bonding of port 53. Uh, and the reason why it's like that is because most... As far as I've read, most Linux systems, or Linux bare, bare metal systems, and some VMs, but as far as I know, it's automatically pre-applied with install. So there's no way to get around that unless if you install something else, so like Windows or some other OS. And this should work on multiple um, Linux distros. Um, Mint, Light Linux, Ubuntu, um, whatever is simply the, the base of Ubuntu. So Zoran, Zoran, whatever the hell it is, Z-O-R-I-N, never been able to pronounce that. But those are just some, some of the subsystems. So... If you want to install whatever subsystem or distro you want on a bare metal machine, you're still going to have the same issue. You're still going to have to do this task. This is only one of the, the one of many tasks of how you can do it. Um, I have tried enabling it or disabling both um, of the things um, that caused this problem, and uh, the device will say it's hooked up to internet but won't even internet connection so I had to re-enable those uh, but it took a little bit of digging and although this this took me like three days to solve I will say after I've known about it and after I did it myself it's simple it, it's about as simple as as anything else you just install Linux or or not yeah, just install Linux. Um, I use it to, to I use TeamViewer um, to have access to it because uh, I do run it headless mode, and um, it was only a temporary setup um, to get TeamViewer on. And you can download TeamViewer directly from TeamViewer. Um, it'll pick the OS that you have. Just remember, you know, if you're based off of Ubuntu, a Debian, or Arch, Arc Linux, or or whatever. Just make sure that you um, go with that same distro, 
and it will install. Uh, from there, update the system, which is pretty simple on Linux Mint. Um, some some systems you got to do the the whole sudo uh, apt dash space upgrade or update. Either way, once update, once upgrade. We pretty much do them the same way. Um, and, and get all your stuff up and running. Like I said, this is a that's an old HP. HP something E520. I think it's an HP in client flex or something. Anyways, it has like an AMD 2 gigahertz processor with 4 gigs of RAM. Now, it was like I said, it was cheap. It could run Linux. And it can run AirGuard. I have no problems with AirGuard. Um, let me pull up another tab. And we're just going to have no problem with AirGuard. So you can just, you know, internet speed test as much as you want. It has no effect on it. It's going to give you whatever internet you're supposed to get. I think I get like 560, 600 down and 20 up. So. It doesn't affect nothing. Um, it doesn't stop ads on YouTube, although I really do wish that was possible, but that's not the case. But other ads, so um, so like say internetspeedtest.net. Um, if you go there, you see like there's like five or six ads within that web page. So once you install AdGuard and you do the little ad thing. You know, add in the the block list. You won't ever see them again. And but anyways, guys, I'm gonna cut this video short. It's already 12 minutes long. Like I said, this is an unedited version of it, and I know that it's not in great detail um, of how to install it. But I'm pretty sure you guys know how to install an OS. And I'm pretty sure most of y'all know how to use copy and paste. Um, and I'm pretty sure most of y'all know how to follow directions. Um, now, I'm not the greatest guy when it comes to uh, directions, and I'm not the smartest guy in the world. Trust me, I've done a lot of dumb shit. But if I can do it, you can do it. Peace out, guys.